Hello, and welcome to A History of Holt Schools, presented by the Holt Delhi Historical Society. We will begin discussing all current and former Holt school buildings. The earliest Delhi Center schools were established in 1840. Miss Lydia Wells taught the first two terms of school in Delhi Center at the George Phillips cabin before the first log school building was completed. The first log school building, which stood on the present site of Hope Middle School, was built of logs about 18 by 24 feet in size, and the whole structure was built around a centrally located stove to heat the space so that schools in cold Michigan winters could be held throughout the winter. That building lasted through 1852 when it was replaced by a wood frame school building on the same site. That building was used until 1875 and eventually was moved just off the site and used as a home, barn, and garage um, adjacent to the school building that replaced it in 1875. Holt's third school building was built in 1875. As shown here in this 1911 photograph, it was a two-story red brick building with a cupola and a bell. It cost about $2,300 to build. Grades one through six were held on the first floor, grades seven and eight on the second floor. I will note here that Holt only offered through the eighth grade at this time. Any student who wanted to advance their education and receive a high school diploma through the 12th grade had the option to go to Lansing or Mason or another local school district that offered advanced grade levels. This building tragically burned one night in 1914. Nobody was injured as, like I said, the fire occurred in the evening. Uh, school quarters were temporarily relocated to the Township Hall and nearby church until the school board and the community were able to deal with replacing the building over the months after this fire in 1914. Following the 1914 fire of the school building, the Holt School Board called a special meeting on December 19, 1914 to ask voters for an $8,000 bond to replace the Holt School Building. Here's a look at the flyer advertising the special school board meeting. Feel free to pause and take a closer look. This is a pretty exceptional piece of our local history. Voters passed that bond proposal by a vote of 54 to 12, and the new 1915 school building was built on the site of the previous three buildings, which is the current site of Hope Middle School. The 1915 building was one story and built of brick, and it consisted of three classrooms. By 1923, there had been such an influx in population after the First World War that a bond proposal was passed and an addition was built across the front of the 1915 school building. It included an office space, entry hall, auditorium, chemistry room, and five classrooms spanning a first and second story. In 1926, the westernmost of those original three 1915 classrooms was raised, and a west wing was added, which consisted of eight classrooms, four on each story. By 1935, a gymnasium, kitchen, cafeteria, and four classrooms were added to the building, and that 1923 auditorium was converted into a library and additional classroom space. In 1963 and 1964, an addition was built onto the north side of the building and consisted of a cafeteria, music room, shop room, special education rooms, and a home economics room. By 1969, a new larger gymnasium was added as well as a swimming pool. The 1935 gymnasium still existed and still does exist as the oldest structure in the district. At that time, it was used as the auditorium because it does have a stage and bleacher seating. Most of the 
old editions, 1915, 1923, and 1926, were demolished in May 1982 after a new Northern edition was added to the building, creating the new Bernard L. Hope Middle School. So the current building exists of an amalgamation of about four different editions, with the oldest being the 1935 WPA work, which we'll talk about in a little more detail later on in this presentation. To give you a visual of that fourth school building built in 1915, Here's a look at what the original three room structure looked like. Um, this existed until about 1923 when an addition covered the front of it. Here's a look at some other views of the building over the years. The top left photo is from 1924. To its right is from 1930. The next one down is 1954 and the one on the bottom corner there is from 1982, just before its demolition. The building served several purposes over the years. From 1915 to 1949, it was Holt's only school building. From 1949 to 1958, it served as the high school that was after Midway Elementary and several other elementary schools were built in the 1950s. In 1958, Holt opened a new high school so this building became Holt Junior High School until 1976 when Holt opened a new junior high school and this became Holt Middle School and Holt introduced the elementary, middle, junior high, and high school grade levels and building structure. As promised, we'll take a look at and briefly discuss Holt's 1935 gymnasium which still stands as part of Hope Middle School today. It was built during President Roosevelt's Works Progress Administration as part of the New Deal, which put people back to work during the Great Depression. Here is a look at Holt's 1957 cheerleaders on the basketball court in that gymnasium. The 1951 and 1952 teaching staff, you can see the stage behind them are kind of situated on the court in front of the stage. And a mid-1950s Holt High School marching band, uh, which is situated at the end of, a, end of the court, sort of under the basket, as you can see the brick wall there. The stage and auditorium feature, as well as the court, are frequently photographed in the 1930s, 40s, 50s, and 60s as a major feature for Holt schools. Um, this gymnasium has been a highlight for uh, many generations of Holt students. In the mid-1940s, following World War II, there was a major influx of young families moving into the district. This caused a shortage of classroom space, which was solved by the construction of two wood outbuildings behind Holt's main school building. This was before the construction of Midway Elementary School in 1949. Initially, these outbuildings were used to house elementary grades. In the upper right, here you can see a 1945 kindergarten class seated on the steps of one of the outbuildings. Later on, the outbuildings were used for band and music classes and shop classes. In the upper left photo here, you'll see longtime Holt Band Director Gerald Winters standing next to his car and in the distance is one of the outbuildings. At the bottom photograph here shows a Holt athletic team standing in front of what is on the right, Holt's school building, and on the left, one of the outbuildings. So that shows you the proximity of the two structures that were located there behind the school building off Park Lane. The outbuildings were raised in 1963 to make room for the addition that was built onto the main school building at that time. Building and site fund millage proposals were brought before Holt voters numerous times in the late 1940s. They were defeated nearly every time. By mid-1949, however, voters approved $105,000 for the construction of a new elementary school in Holt. This marked the first time 
Holt Schools offered more than one school building for all of its students. W.H. Beasley and Son were the contractor for the construction of the new Midway Elementary School, which was built over the course of 1949 and 1950. The new school opened in the fall of 1950 with Lynn Doolittle as its first principal. There has been numerous additions over the years, including six rooms in 1952 and seven rooms in 1960. The building closed as an elementary school in 2014, and it was converted into the Midway Early Learning Center, housing Holt's earliest and youngest learners. Holt Motors approved a bond proposal in the fall of 1952 for $360,000 for the construction of two new elementary schools. These schools were meant to be twins and were designed as such. Sycamore and Elliott both opened in the fall of 1953 with seven classrooms each. Alton Stein and Josie Watrous served as the school's first principals, Stein at Sycamore and Watrous at Elliott. Both schools received different additions over the years, so they are not twins to this day. Um, an athletic field was added next to Elliott in 1972. We will discuss later on in this presentation the namesake of Elliott School, Miss Tessa Elliott. In 1955, Holt voters approved a $1 million bond proposal for the construction of a new Holt High School. The building was constructed over the course of 1955 through 1958. The building opened in the fall of 1958 with Robert Schieffer as its first principal. Originally a campus style layout with four distinct buildings, the building was remodeled in 1963 and 1964 with an addition made between each of the buildings connecting that original campus layout. In 1968 and 1969, an auditorium, swimming pool, and music rooms were added to the building. A new football stadium was also developed that year, and the large black-topped parking lot was also added. In 1981, improvements to the home economics rooms in the building were completed. And in 1993, a northern horseshoe wing, which consisted of 12 classrooms, was added to the building. Here's a 1980s look at Holt High School. On the right is the office space, and on the left is the library. The 1993 edition wrapped around the library, and this view we're looking at is what is now the main entrance to Holt Junior High School. The building was retired as Holt High School in 2003 and now serves Holt students as Holt Junior High School, serving grades 7 and 8. Holt and Diamonddale united in 1962. We'll talk a bit more about the details of that merger later on in the presentation. But to take a look at the Diamonddale Elementary School building, which is still in use as a school building today. Diamonddale voters passed a bond issue in the fall of 1951 for the construction of a new elementary school. The new elementary was built adjacent to Diamonddale High School over the course of 1951 and 1952, and the building opened in the fall of 1952. As I said, the building joined the Holt family in 1962 and is still actively in use today. The school has received numerous additions over the years, including in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, most substantially. In 1966, MSU professor and real estate developer Dr. Daniel Sturt sold Holt Public Schools land in his new Heather Haven subdivision for the construction of a new neighborhood elementary school. Wilcox Elementary School was developed and built in 1967 and 68 using 1966 bond dollars. The building was designed by Mayotte Webb Architects of Lansing and built by Renegar Construction of Lansing. The school opened in the fall of 1968 with Ted Sample as its first principal. It originally had 14 classrooms. There was an addition in 1971 and in 1993. 
This lower left photograph here shows a 1960s model of the original school building. In 1973, Holt Schools purchased 78 acres from Lansing Fuel and Ice for the development of a West Campus and the eventual construction of a new school building. A new Holt Junior High School was built on the site in 1975 and 1976 to house the 8th and 9th graders of Holt. The building originally consisted of a cluster classroom concept with quad classrooms structured by subject and without traditional walls between the classrooms. The building opened in the fall of 1976 with Thomas Horn as the building's first principal. By 1981, that cluster classroom concept was remodeled and walls were built between the classrooms. Another addition was added of 10 rooms onto the west end of the building in 1993. In 2003, the building was retired as Holt Junior High School and it became Holt High School's ninth grade campus. It served in that capacity through 2014 when it became Holt High School's North Campus, housing each year's senior class. The history of this site dating back to 1840 was largely discussed early on in this presentation. I'll take a moment here though to reflect on the building that currently still stands as Hope Middle School. The site became a middle school in 1976. Originally called Holt Middle School, it was dedicated to Bernard L. Hope in 1980. We'll talk a bit more about Mr. Hope later on in this presentation. In 1981, Holt voters approved a bond issue for additions and renovations district-wide, including a large addition to Hope Middle School. That addition included 17 classrooms, a library, and main office suite. So the 1981 addition was added to all of the prior 1915, 1923, 1926, 1935, and the 1960s editions. So we had a sprawling amalgamation of multiple editions in 1982. In May 1982, the old two-story structure facing Holt Road was demolished. So that took with it the 1915, 1923, and 1926 pieces of the building. What stands today are the 1935 gymnasium and 1960s additions. There are a few 1960s classrooms, as well as the 1960s gymnasium and pool space, as well as the 1981-82 Northern Classroom Wing. A $25 million bond proposal was passed by Holt voters in 1991 for the construction of Horizon Elementary School and Washington Woods Middle School, as well as improvements district-wide. Washington Woods Middle School was built over the course of 1992 and 1993. It opened in the fall of 1993 with Val Smith as its first principal. As one of the 1990s West Campus additions, Approaching 30 years old, Washington Woods is still considered one of Holt's newer school buildings. Funded by the 1991 $25 million bond proposal, Horizon Elementary School was constructed in 1992 and 1993. The building opened in the fall of 1993 as a balanced calendar school. It is the longest operating balanced calendar school in the state of Michigan. It has received numerous awards over the years. Built in the 1990s on Holt's West Campus development, Horizon, approaching 30 years old, is still one of Holt's newer school buildings. In 1999, Holt Schools purchased 157 acres of land from the Cars Dairy Farm on West Holt Road. In 2000, Holt voters approved a $73.5 million bond proposal for the construction of a new high school and other district-wide improvements. Designed by TMP Architecture, the new Holt High School was built over the course of 2001, 2002, and 2003, 
and opened in the fall of 2003 at a cost of $67 million. The building, now nearly 20 years old, is Holt Public School's newest school building. Now we'll take a look at a few landmark years for Holt schools. In 1910, Holt added the 10th grade. Prior to that, Holt had only offered through the 8th grade. In 1923, Holt added the 11th grade, and in 1925, added the 12th grade, making the class of 1926 Holt's first 12th grade graduating class. Here is a brief look at Holt's first 10th grade class in 1910, with a photograph of the class on the left and on the right, a look at the commencement program. And here is a look at Holt's first graduating class in 1926. There is Holt's superintendent and class advisor sprinkled in here but otherwise all are the senior class of 1926. The diplomas for the first graduating class consisted of diplomas in gray leather folders lined with old rose satin. And I'll note here that if you have one of these diplomas or know of one in existence, we would love to see it. And uh, please reach out to us. Let's take a look here at the class transitions and which classes were in each building over the years. Prior to 1950 and the opening of Midway Elementary School, Holt only had one school building serving all grades K through 12. With the opening of Midway in 1950, elementary schoolers attended Midway, K through 6th, and the high school, 7 through 12. With the opening of the new Holt High School in 1958, the breakdown was again reconfigured so that elementary served K through six, junior high seven through nine, and high school 10 through 12. With the opening of the new junior high school in 1976, the breakdown was changed again, making elementary schools K through five, middle school six and seven, junior high eight and nine, and high school 10 through 12. With the opening of the new Holt High School in 2003, the structure was again changed. Elementary schools then served K through four, middle schools five and six, junior high seven and eight, the freshman campus for ninth graders, and the high school 10 through 12th grade. Since 2014, the senior high school layout changed a bit. Elementary remains K through four, middle school five and six, and junior high seven and eight. The main campus at the high school serves grades nine through 11, and the north campus serves 12th graders. Moving along here, we will discuss the numerous rural school district annexations and consolidations that occurred over the years, including the gun school, and Diamonddale in 1962. Originally, there were 12 rural country school districts in Delhi Township. Here's a list of all of them with the date that they were established. By 1906, all of these districts were reorganized and many of them consolidated in one way or another. Many of them consolidated with Holt schools, which was originally Delhi District Number One. Others consolidated with other area schools in closer proximity to them, including Lansing, Okemos, or Mason, depending on their location and the size of the merger that needed to happen. Here's a look at the Harper School, the old Grovenberg School, Maple Grove School, the Dunn School, and the Nichols School. After the initial mass consolidations and annexations that occurred in 1906 of the rural 
country schools in Delhi Township. A few did remain. The Gun School, which is located at the corner of Holt and Washington Roads, consolidated with Holt Schools in 1957. The building still stands, and we'll talk about the building in a moment. North School in the Miller Road community was annexed by the city of Lansing in 1960. Maple Grove School, which was located just west of the North School in the southern end of Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, was annexed in 1963 by the city of Lansing. Island School, which was at the corner of College and Jolly Roads, was split up four ways amongst Lansing, East Lansing, Holt, and Mason schools in 1965. The Gun School, which was originally Delhi District No. 7, originally consisted of a log structure on the same site from 1867 through 1886. The current structure was built in 1886, and Charles A. Gunn, the owner of the farmland, gave a $25.99 year lease on the property so long as it was used as a school. In 1957, the Gunn School had gotten so small that it merged with Holt Schools. Holt Schools became the owner of the building and sold it off. It became a church, uh, an art studio, and various other things over the years. Uh, in the 1990s, there was a threat of demolition to the building, and Holt Schools purchased the building back in 1998. It was restored in the early 2000s and is still owned by Holt Schools today. It is an Ingham County historic site. Diamondale schools attempted consolidations a couple times in the 1950s. They attempted and failed to consolidate with Potterville schools in 1958 and with Waverly schools in 1959. Eventually, in 1962, both Holt and Diamondale communities were held a vote to determine if Holt would Holt schools would annex Diamondale schools. Both communities voted favorably for the annexation, and Holt was given care of all of Diamondale students and its two buildings. Diamondale High School was raised in 1965, and Diamondale Elementary, which was built in 1952, remains an elementary school today. Diamondale School Superintendent Harvey Wood joined Holt School's administration as an assistant superintendent in October 1962. Diamondale High School's principal, James Bannock, joined Holt High School as an art and driver's ed teacher. Bannock and Wood were two of a group of a dozen or so Diamondale staff members who joined Holt Schools. Now we'll take a look at some people from Holt Schools past, including superintendents, high school principals, and some notable names from Holt Schools history. Larned Goodrich was Holt's first superintendent starting in 1923, when Holt added the 11th grade to its curriculum. He was the first formal superintendent. He went on to establish the band administratively, and in 1925 recommended to the school brown and gold as spirit colors. He met his wife, Miss Emma Favorite, uh, when they were both employed by Holt Schools. Titus Wilt succeeded Lonet Goodrich as Holt superintendent in 1936. He held the position for two years until 1938. He had been a teacher in Holt throughout the 1930s. Stuart Openlander succeeded Mr. Wilt as Holt superintendent in 1938. He had been a teacher and principal of Holt High School earlier in the 1930s. Known affectionately as Mr. Holt, he was beloved by students, and many early alumni still recall him. While superintendent, he still taught classes in economics to, quote, stay in touch with education. He led the band and directed the music program in 1936 while superintendent, and he was honored by the Holt Alumni Association in 1977. He left Holt in 1945 and went on to get a master's and doctorate degree from Michigan State University. He went on to Ohio and served as a school superintendent there until 1975. 
He returned to the area and taught part-time for Lansing Community College and lived to the ripe old age of 97 when he passed in 2009. Benton Yates succeeded Mr. Openlander as superintendent of Holt Schools in 1945. He set a pace of development and advancement in the district and oversaw the construction of Midway Elementary School, which broke the traditional country school format of one centralized school building. He was a charter member of the Holt Kiwanis Club and Delhi Township and Holt Schools together supplied a home for him while he was superintendent. Rex B. Smith succeeded Benton Yates as superintendent of Holt Schools in 1951. Mr. Smith oversaw the construction of Sycamore and Elliott Schools in 1952 and 1953, as well as the bond proposal and construction of Holt High School from 1955 through 1958. During Smith's tenure, the student body of Holt Schools more than doubled. With four weeks left in the school year of 1958, Mr. Smith took a job in Troy, Michigan as the school superintendent there. He remained in that role through 1969, and the Rex B. Smith Middle School in Troy, which opened in 1967, is dedicated in his honor. Dr. Maurice Pernert joined Holt Schools as superintendent in 1958, replacing Rex B. Smith. One of his first tasks as superintendent was overseeing the opening of the new Holt High School in 1958. He also oversaw most of the school consolidations of the 1960s, including Diamonddale, uh, the construction of Wilcox Elementary School in 1968, and under his tenure, enrollment in Holt Schools almost quadrupled from 1958 to 1971. Pernert died unexpectedly in 1971 while still superintendent. Flags were flown at half staff and the, as the district mourned his loss. And the following year, the still relatively new high school auditorium was dedicated in his honor as he was a huge supporter of the arts. Dr. Donald Chabosky replaced Dr. Pernert as Holt superintendent in 1971. Among his first actions was district-wide infrastructure upgrades in 1971 and 1972. He oversaw the construction of the new Holt Junior High School in 1975 and 1976, and the restructuring of the district in 1976. He resigned as superintendent in October 1978 to become superintendent of the Ingham ISD. Dr. Henry Shenkovich succeeded Dr. Shabusky in 1978 as superintendent of Holt Schools. He led the district through some of its toughest fiscal times in its history, but was able to maintain all programs without any cuts. He oversaw the 1981-1982 bond issue and improvements across the district, including the major renovation and addition of Hope Middle School. Dr. Mark Maximovich succeeded Dr. Shenkovich as Holt Superintendent in 1987. He oversaw the 1991 bond proposal for the construction and addition of two new school buildings to the district of Horizon and Washington Woods as well as district-wide improvements with that bond proposal. His priority throughout his tenure was the development of advanced and specialized special education programs for all levels in the district. In 1997, Mr. Thomas Davis was elevated to the position of superintendent of Holt Schools he began in Holt in 1972 as a math teacher at Holt High School. He held that position until 1985 when he became the principal of Holt High School and in 1993 became an assistant superintendent. 
Mr. Davis oversaw the 2000 to 2003 building of Holt High School and district-wide renovations and restructuring. Dr. Johnny Scott succeeded Davis as superintendent of Holt Schools in 2008. He had been principal of Holt Junior High School since 1995, prior to his appointment to the superintendency. In 2013-14, Dr. Scott oversaw the district reinvention plan, which involved the introduction of the Holt High School Senior Campus, or North Campus, and the closure of Midway Elementary School and reinvention of it into the Midway Early Learning Center. Dr. David Hornack succeeded Dr. Scott as superintendent in 2015. He joined Holt as a teacher in 1995 and served as principal of Horizon Elementary School from 2007 to 2015. He has to date expanded Holt's balanced calendar offerings by adding Sycamore to the balanced calendar system. Since 1925, when Holt introduced the 12th grade, the following have been principals of Holt High School. Paul Strait, Charles Mann, Keith Odell, Stuart Openlander, Wesley Black, Barrett Vorse, Ronald Sage, Robert Schieffer, John Wellington, Chandler Knotts, Paul Jolly, and unpictured here, Tom Davis, Brian Templin, and currently Michael Willard. Bernard L. Hope graduated with the Holt High School class of 1950. He was a star athlete, lettering in football, basketball, and track. He set a track and field record in the 220 yard dash in just 22 and a half seconds, the oldest record in Holt High School's athletic record book. Hope joined the Holt Board of Education in 1963 and served through 1980. He was the board president from 1966 through 1980. During his tenure on the Board of Education, Hope saw three superintendencies and oversaw numerous school developments and growth in the district. Mr. Hope passed away in 1980 and the Holt Middle School was dedicated as the Bernard L. Hope Middle School for the fact that he attended the very school on the site and to honor years of commitment and dedication and contributions to Holt Schools. Ms. Tessa Elliott was a Holt teacher from 1918 through 1956. She taught in that original 1915 three-room school building and saw a vast expansion and growth in the district. Elliott Elementary School was dedicated in her honor in 1953. When the school opened, she moved her classroom into the building and taught in the school that bared her name for three years, 1953 through 1956. She retired in 1956. Margaret Livensberger was a fixture in Holt Schools for decades. Starting with the district in 1954 as a teacher, eventually becoming a principal, and retiring as a full-time teacher in 1977, but soon returning to the classroom as a full-time substitute teacher in 1978 and continuing in that role until 1995. She joined the whole Board of Education in 1997 and held the position for the rest of her life until 2005. Upon her death in 2005, there was a movement to name the new Holt High School Auditorium, which had opened two years earlier in her honor because she was such a supporter of the arts. John W. G. graduated with the Holt class of 1973. He was a distinguished athlete and academic during his years in Holt and beyond. John tragically lost his life in an automobile accident in 1975. His parents, distinguished Lansing doctors, his father performed the first open heart surgery at Ingham Medical Center in 1966. In 1978, the doctors Chi became benefactors of the Holt High School Library 
dedicating it as the John W. Chi Memorial Library. In 2003, when the new Holt High School opened, the Chi name moved into the new library space. A portrait, bust, and dedication area remain features of the Holt High School Library today. The Doctors Chi also became benefactors of the John W. Chi Medical Library at McLaren Greater Lansing, which was dedicated in 1976. The Chi name also survives at the Chi Heart and Surgery Center at McLaren Greater Lansing. After the passing of Dr. Maurice Pernert, Holt School Superintendent, in 1971, it was decided that the relatively new Holt High School Auditorium, which opened in 1969, would be dedicated in his honor as he was an ardent supporter of the arts. As is shown in the top photograph, a portrait and plaque were placed in the lobby outside of the auditorium at the dedication in 1972. The portrait fell into disrepair over the years and was removed for many decades. Just a few years ago, a collaborative effort between Holt Schools, the Holt Delhi Historical Society, and the Holt Alumni Association restored the portrait, and it is now again proudly on display in the lobby of the Pernard Auditorium. Dr. Franklin Troost was a fixture in Holt. He opened his practice in 1930 and delivered innumerable babies in the community over his decades in practice. Dr. Truce was Holt High School's football team physician from 1932 through 1964. Upon his retirement from practice in 1972, Holt High School's football field was dedicated in his honor. The lower left photo shows the Iron Gate as the entrance to the field. Dr. Troost passed away in 1990 at age 92. Here's a look at some of our long-standing traditions in Holt. Holt's first yearbook, which was published in 1930, was called The Lone Pine. Holt's first three yearbooks published in 1930, 1931, and in 1937 are all titled The Lone Pine. Yearbooks in these early years were pretty sporadic. The next section of regular yearbooks was 1946, 47, 48, and 49. And here you'll see the titles of those yearbooks, School Days, Theta Sigma, Echo, and The Key. There was no yearbook published in 1950, the student body never got organized and never got anything published. But in 1951, we introduced Rampages as the title of our yearbook, and Holt's yearbooks today are still called the Rampages. Holt has had a few different school newspapers over the years. The earliest on record is the Rambler's Roundup, first published in 1947. In 1968, Holt High School started the Ramonian newspaper, and in 1991 started the Ramparts, which is still Holt High School's newspaper today. There are some others known to exist that are not included here. The Holt High School fight song was written in 1938. Prior to 1938, it's said that Holt used the Harvard special tune with special lyrics. Here in the upper right, you'll see an earlier version of the fight song before we had our current iteration. The current fight song was written by Holt High School student Robert Basil around 1938. He is said to have had some assistance from Holt High School band director Rex Hewlett in uh, the composition. The band still plays the fight song as Basil wrote it in 1938, though the lyrics, which are in the lower right here, are by far not widely known today as they once were by students and alumni. Holt High School's alma mater was written in 1941 by Harry Digard. He was a student at Holt High School at the time, graduating with the class of 1941. 
In the lower right, you'll see the lyrics that Daggart wrote. Currently, the alma mater is largely kept alive by the Holt Choirs. The marching band has played the song more so in the last decade or so, but uh, historically, the, the music has been played uh, at football games and at concerts. In the upper right here, you'll see an earlier version of Holt's alma mater before Die Gart's uh, and our current version. And finally, a few assorted traditions. Holt school colors, brown and gold, were suggested by Superintendent Larned Goodrich in 1925. The student body voted and adopted those colors in 1925, so we are approaching a century of brown and gold in Holt. The mascot, Rams, has sort of a sketchy history. Uh, originally known as the Ramblers, sort of evolved into Rams. There are mentions to the Ramblers going back to the 1930s. Assorted people over the years have taken credit for the Rams name, but there is no clear-cut answer or history that's documented as to the origins of the Ram mascot. In the late 1990s, Holt's student section developed into what became the H-Town Posse. The Posse was uh, initially started during the 1998-99 basketball season when Harvey the Duck was always present at the games and the students used duck calls throughout the games as a distraction. Over the years, t-shirts were developed and the posse evolved. Uh, it fizzled out around 2015 and more recently, Holt's student section has been referred to as the herd as a reference to the Rams mascot. And our final section is taking a look at some activities and programs, including athletic programs and the arts. Holt's Parent Teacher Association, the PTA, was established in 1923. This was led by Miss Marguerite Wolcott, who at the time was Holt High School's principal. Miss Wolcott is Holt's only known female principal. Holt added a hot lunch option in 1957. In 1959, remedial summer school was added. Sex education was added to curriculum in 1966. The Board of Education added drug education to the curriculum in 1972. Community education or adult education was launched in 1972 as well. Also in 1972, the Capital Area Career Center was established and Holt began participation immediately. The Career Center is now known as the Wilson Talent Center. Holt began an exchange with West Germany in 1974. Here we'll take a brief look at the long history of Holt High School's football. Holt played football as early as 1906, at least informally. A formal team was established in 1926. The earliest coaches of football in Holt were also the principals of Holt High School, including Charles Mann and Paul Strait, for example. Holt's first league membership was with the Ingham County League. Here you'll see the other members of that league. Around 1953, Holt joined the Capital Circuit League. Here were our opponents in that league. And in 1976, Holt joined the Capital Area Activities Conference and actively competes in the Blue Division in football. In 1948, Holt constructed and opened a new football stadium at the corner of Aurelius and Sycamore. In the mid-1950s, that site was developed into the new Holt High School building and the football stadium was moved further out on the property. It was updated in 1969 and is still used by Junior Rams football and for other purposes. Holt High School's current football stadium at the newer high school building opened in 2003 with the building and is most recently being dedicated to the late Mike Smith, who led Holt High School football from 1994 through 2007. 
One of our most notable coaches was Daryl Briggs, who led the Holt High School football team from 1964 through 1976 and saw countless titles. His 1972 team went undefeated and is in the local Hall of Fame. At the bottom here, you'll see a list of our former football coaches, including most recently Mike Smith, Al Slammer, and Chad Falk since 2015. Here's a glimpse at a 1906 Holt versus Lansing football game. And Holt's 1929 football team. And a look at the dynamic duo of Holt Athletics in the 1950s and 60s, Walt Pulowski and Dan Hovenetian, the head and assistant football coach, respectively. Pulowski led Holt's football team from 1953 through 1964 and remained as an assistant principal and athletic director at Holt High School until 1981. Hovenetian assisted as, the foot, as a football coach in the early 1950s before taking the helm of Holt's basketball team, and we'll discuss him in just a moment. It is not entirely clear when Holt High School's first basketball team was established. We do know, however, that there was a basketball team before there was a gymnasium. Holt's first gymnasium was constructed in 1935, which means a basketball team came into being prior to 1935 probably in the 1920s. We know that before Holt had a gymnasium, the Holt High School basketball team played in the largest room in Holt, which happened to be a space in the Delhi Township Hall. Our beloved Hall of Fame coach, Dan Hovenetian, led the Rams from 1953 through 1979. His 1974 team were the runners up to the Class B state championship. In 2005, head coach Bruce Larner led the Rams to a Class A state championship. Other successful coaches of late have been Bruce Larner, Matt Essel, Darren Zwick, and Ben Curtis currently. Here's a glimpse at an early Holt High School basketball team from 1930. Holt's renowned wrestling program was founded in 1964. It didn't take long for the team to bring home its first state championship. Coach Gary Smith led the team to its first title in 1971. One member of that team was Rocky Shaft, who returned to Holt in 1980 as a coach and teacher. For 41 years, Shaft has led the team to great success. He's brought home three more state titles with his wrestlers in 1996, 1997, and 2008. As a wrestler and a coach, Shaft has been involved in all of our state championships. Holt Girls Basketball was established by physical education teacher Mrs. Martha Marvin in 1955. The girls basketball team joined the new Capital Area Girls Basketball League in 1963. Coach Vonda Giroux led the team to win the first league championship in 1963. Girls tennis and track were introduced to Holt in 1972. Miss Jean Johnson was another Holt physical education teacher who also led the girls basketball team for a period of time. Pat Summers was a long time varsity athletics coach in Holt. She led the girls varsity softball team from 1974 through 2005 and the girls varsity tennis team from 1974 through 2014. Her 1978 girls tennis team were runners up to the state title. And Leela Gunther coached the girls track team from 1973 through 1990 and the girls basketball team from 1976 through 1991. The 1976 girls track team were state champions. A boys tennis team was established in 1928 by Presbyterian Church Reverend Leonard Andrews, who was also a teacher at Holt High School. 
Here's a 1970s Holt tennis team. The Holt cheerleading program began around 1946. That date is kind of fuzzy because this period is not super well documented. And varsity swimming was added as a sport in 1971. Here's a team from around that period. We recognize that so many sports and different athletic programs were not included in this presentation, and that was largely due to a lack of historical information about those programs. So if you would like to share some history with us, please reach out. We would love to hear from you. Here's a brief history of Holt's instrumental music program. An orchestra was first established in 1926 by Miss Evelyn Rosen. The orchestra only lasted through about 1931. Holt's band was established in December 1929, in part due to the efforts of Superintendent Larned Goodrich, who struck a deal with the Holton Company, manufacturers of musical instruments, and a local music instructor in Lansing. Miss Alberta Phillips was the first Holt High School band director. The marching band was first formed around 1936. There have been several sets of uniforms, including in 1936, a cap and cape look. New sets of uniforms were purchased in 1948, 1972, 1989, 1994, and yet to debut the new 2020 marching band uniforms. The color guard was added to the marching band in 1979. Holt's longtime beloved band director, Mr. Gerald Winters, led the Holt High School band program from 1952 through 1984. There have been several other integral members of the Holt band family, including Mr. Mike McMurtry and Mr. Tim Perry, as well as current Holt High School band director, Mike Emerson. Here's a look at the first ever Holt High School band in 1929. Miss Alberta Phillips, the director, is standing third from right in the back row there. Here's a glimpse at the 1936 Holt High School marching band, wearing the cap and cape uniform that I previously described. The director here standing on the right is then superintendent, Mr. Stuart Openlander. And finally, a brief history of Holt's vocal music program. In 1926, the very first choir at Holt High School was established by Miss Evelyn Rosen, who led the group. There was a period of time in the late 1940s and early 1950s that Holt did not have a choir. When Mr. Winters, the band director, came to Holt in 1952, he and the newly established band boosters rallied and established a new choir and he reached out to Michigan State College and brought in a young director in William Ainsley. Holt's beloved and long-tenured choir director, Mr. Ron Allen, led Holt High School's choirs from 1957 through 1994. He was succeeded by Monty Bishop, and the present Holt High School choir director is Mr. Seth Burke. Thank you for watching, and we hope you've enjoyed this presentation of A History of Holt Schools presented by the Holt Delhi Historical Society. Please leave your questions in the comments section, and we will do our best to respond. Thank you.